And the range R of a projectile fired with an initial velocity v naught at an angle theta with the horizontal is R equals to this crazy <coughs> formula here. Where G is acceleration, and uh, you know what this is. This is a negative 9.8 meters square seconds. That's from physics. Uh, find the angle such that the range is magnitude. Actually, without really resorting to calculus, we know the answer to this. What, what is the angle? 45 degrees. If you shoot it at an angle of 45 degrees, you will get the maximum range. But would it be cool to actually use calculus to verify that? So let's, let's try that. Solution. In this case, we're going to consider V naught as constant G and G as constant. Well, G is a constant uh, if you're not changing the location too much. I mean, if, if you're doing an inter intercontinental missile shooting, then uh, this, this won't work anymore because it's, uh, it's very different. Uh, but in, in a shorter range where you just think the Earth is a plane, this is fine. And in that case, g is a constant, and the velocity is the initial velocity, so that doesn't change. So, although you have, it seems like it has many variables in it, it only has one variable, which is just the theta. And because it's already a function of a single variable, you don't need any constraint. Okay? Usually, these optimization questions have the structure where you have the target and the constraint, and usually, the target is a function of two or more variables, and you solve the target. Uh, you solve the constraint to plug it in back into the target to make the target as a single variable function because that's the only way we know how to differentiate, right? But here, it's already a function of a single variable, so there is no, ne no need for figuring out the constraint and solving that for anything and plugging in. That part is not needed here. So it's actually much more e easier than you, it seems. Okay? So it's a very easy question. All you have to do is just find the derivative. If you differentiate sine to theta, you have to use the chain rule, right? Sine differentiates to cosine, but since 2 theta is nested in sine, that has to pull down and differentiate it, so it's 2 over g. Okay. v naught squared or g, these are just, just con constants multiplied to this function, so it doesn't, you don't have to do anything to them. Okay. The only thing that requires differentiation is a sine to 2 theta. Okay. And if you differentiate, this is what you get. Now, first you have to figure out the critical numbers. Set it equal to zero. When does it become zero? Well, multiply by g, divide by 2, and divide by b naught squared, and you get cosine 2 theta equal to zero. So in order to be a critical number, it, it has to be this one. Cosine 2 theta has to equal to zero. Now, let's see. What is the graph of the cosine? The cosine graph. 2 pi, pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, cosine graph starts from 1, 0, negative 1, 0, up. That's the graph of the cosine. <coughs> when does the cosine become 0? Here or there. Okay. So either 2 theta is equal to pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. And actually there's more There's because uh, it's peri periodic, so there are more cases. However, you, you quickly realize that the only one that makes sense is this one because, you know, theta is an angle with respect to the ground, right? If theta is 90 degrees, you're, you're shooting straight up. If you go beyond 90 degrees, it's like shooting at your, your own, it will be a friendly fire, right? Yeah, you don't want that. So, so uh, yeah, these won't make sense because theta has to be between 0 to 90 degrees. If, theta is between 0 to 90 degrees, then 2 times theta should be 0 to 180 degrees. And therefore, you're only looking at the values between 0 to 180 degrees. Remember, pi radians is 180 degrees, right? So you're only looking at here. And the only place where the cosine becomes 0 in this interval is pi over 2. Therefore, if you divide by 2, you get pi over 4. Okay. So you have theta equals to pi over 4. And now we have to figure out what the <coughs> C 
sign of R prime is before and after uh, before and after pi over four. Okay. Um, so so even the boundary values, as long as they don't give you zero, you can still use it as test points. Um, if you plug in zero, cosine zero is in this picture, it's one, right? Cosine zero is one. And therefore, one times two times whatever divided by, oh, just a minute, just a minute. Uh, let me make this plus. Yeah, because I, I need this, this g to be a plus because or else your range will be a, a, a negative value, right? So, Depending on the problem, sometimes you, you want to put a minus for the, the g to, to describe this falling object. And sometimes they just want to take the absolute value of that and put 9.8. And for this question, you really need the positive one, uh, or else your range becomes a negative value. Okay, so, uh, I shouldn't really have written this down, and, and nobody would have worried about anything. But OK, so g is some positive value. v naught squared is positive value. Uh, oh, here. This is positive, this is positive, 2 is positive, this is 1, so overall it's positive, right? It's positive here. Okay. If I pick pi over 2, what's pi over 2 plugged in here? Pi over 2 times 2 is? Pi over 2 times 2 is? Pi. Cosine pi is? Cosine pi is? Negative 1, thank you. Negative 1 times 2? times something positive, divided by something positive, so you get negative. Okay. So using these two endpoints as test, test points, now you figured out that R value increases before pi over 4, and it starts increasing after pi. Therefore, we've, showed, we've shown that at pi over 4, this function R reaches its maximum. Okay. So the answer is 45 degrees, or Hyper force radius. Okay, so we we verified what we already knew, and uh, kind of cool. <laughs>